Hey, what happened to those dinosaurs after they departed Noah's Ark? Answers in Genesis says that there were some 85 different kinds of dinosaurs that were preserved on Noah's Ark. They departed from the Ark just 4,350 years ago into this world, and then they proceeded to disappear. That's always left some questions in my mind, and I think it's a common question, what happened to the dinosaurs? Here we're going to see Dr. Dan Biddle of Genesis Apologetics, who is appearing on a video that's hosted by Standing for Truth channel on YouTube. Uh, this is a video just from this evening that I watched, and Dr. Dan Biddle says something that once again raised that question in my mind, and I'm just going to explore that for a couple of minutes in this really quick episode of Critiquing Creationism. All right, so let's get right to it. Let's take a listen to what Dr. Dan Biddle has to say. Uh, this is just going to be a one-minute clip, and then that's going to give us some fodder to, uh, to explore. So dinosaurs were created as land creatures on day six. Then at some point we have the fallen corruption that happened. About 1,656 years after creation, we have the flood. And about 85 different kinds of dinosaurs were There's preserved on the ark. Sometimes the estimate's a little bit more. Sometimes it's a little bit less. I believe AIG's perspective is about 85 different uh, dinosaurs at the family level were on board the ark. After those 85 dinosaur kinds got off of the ark about four and a half thousand years ago, they went uh, extinct very quickly. Most of them went extinct. Some of them were hunted. They were hungry. Okay, so there you have it. 85 different types of dinosaurs, according to Answers in Genesis. Maybe a few less or more different kinds, separately created kinds of dinosaurs are preserved on the ark. They walk down the ramp of the ark depart into a world that has been destroyed. And they find that there's not a lot of resources there. That's the idea of being hungry. They also find that they are, they are possible food for other organisms like human beings, that humans hunted them. This is a common thing that I've heard from young earth creationists is that uh, they would have been subjected to hunting. And since there weren't a large number of them, it could have easily been pushed to, exist, uh, to extinction. Now remember, we're talking about 85 different kinds several hundred animals who would have departed to cover the world. And humans only really stayed in one small area. So I don't know how they hunted into the extinction in all parts of the world. Then there's this idea of them not being equipped, right? The climate was different. The food sources were different. And so that stressed them out. But all of the different dinosaurs, every single different one went extinct in this brand new world. I'll throw in one other little detail. Um, Dan Biddle, who is, who is the person behind the recent movie or film that I just went to see, uh, The Ark and the Darkness, it also talked about dinosaurs and how they went extinct in Noah's Flood, because after all, that's what the film was about, is Noah's Flood. And in that um, documentary, they talk about the dinosaurs, again, not being equipped. They're being uh, hunted. Uh, the resources, the nutrients were not the same after the flood, and that caused not just the extinction of the dinosaurs, but the extinction of some more than 50% of all the different kinds of organisms that God preserved on the ark, all the different vertebrate animals God preserved on the ark, all went extinct after the flood. It's not just dinosaurs, but dinosaurs kind of stick out because it's like an entire group. Well, also... The pterosaurs, right? Some, I don't know, 60 or so different kinds of pterosaurs, according to Answers in Genesis, and every single one of them also disappears shortly after the flood. Oh, I said I was going to add one additional point. That comes from that, that documentary, the Ark, and the, the Ark in the Darkness. And in there, they also mention genetic entropy, right? That their genomes are decaying, and therefore that also pushed them to extinction. Of course, that genetic entropy applies to all organisms, including us. Uh, and so why there would be a plethora of mammalian lineages, of which very few went extinct, whereas the reptiles didn't, I'm not sure that genetic entropy is a very good explanation for that. But let's listen for just another 15 or 20 seconds. We'll pick up on one other thing uh, that I want to make note of. The food systems were much, much different. They weren't equipped for a post-flood world. Those, the large varieties probably went out extinct uh, very quickly. Theropods and pterosaurs were probably the longest lasting dinosaur kinds, and I believe they're probably both extinct now. But there's plenty of sightings and legends and rumors and myths about theropod types of dinosaurs and pterosaur types of dinosaurs 
all the way through the medieval times, and then they tapered after that pretty quickly. Ah, did you catch that? So, Dr. Dan Biddle is say, suggesting that pterosaurs and theropods uh, might have, you know, they might have eked it out for a while, actually several thousand years. I mean, as you said, that, that there is many, many different legends of them, legends of them from different parts of the world, right? Many different locate, many different continents that have some sort of legend of some kind of dragon-like thing, uh, which would be dinosaurs and some kind of flying creatures like pterosaurs. Um, I know he's probably referring to a couple different um, reports in China and so forth that were from you know, well, well into the Middle Ages. So this would be, what, 3,000 years after Noah's Ark? 3,000 years after they step off the Ark, they've managed to survive for 3,000 years. Um, so really, is it, is it a habitat problem if they could survive for 3,000 years? Uh, is it a nutrient issue? Uh, is it genetic entropy? Is it hunting? None of those things seem to have been immediately detrimental uh, to these different organisms that we're seeing later on. But that also just brings to mind the, the here, here's, here's the main thing. Here's the thing that I thought of that, I, that, I, that still always puzzles me. It's like, if hunting were really one of your primary explanations for why a bunch of different organisms went extinct after the flood, especially really charismatic ones, Thinking like Triceratops, T. Rex, um, other like Velociraptor with those incredible uh, claws that they have. Um, if I was a hunter, what what do hunters do? Like you know, what does the typical hunter do? I mean, some hunters are are hunting for their survival, but even those hunters that are hunting for survival tend to keep portions of what they've hunted. Right? I mean, sometimes it's because they're useful. I would imagine like the claws of a velociraptor in the earliest times, like, you know, you know young, young creationists have to compress the stone age and all these different uh, uh, hunter gatherer sort of types of communities uh, into a very, very short compressed timeline. Right. So they have to, they have to say that the people were just barely were subsisting, you know, using stone tools and so forth. Yeah, imagine you're using a stone tool to try to, you know, um, cut your meat and so forth. When you've just killed a T-Rex or a Velociraptor, right? And you could use those very sharp teeth, <laughs> those serrated teeth. Right? And uh, I would think you would save those things. I think you would preserve those parts of the body after you've maybe gotten the meat off of them. Maybe you would preserve the bones, right? Massive, huge bones on some of these organisms. You would build some things out of those bones. You would, uh, you would uh, use them to make other tools. Right? But surely, T-Rex teeth, velociraptors, like, I, mean, I think we could go through and figure out a whole bunch of other like, features, parts of different organisms that are preserved. I mean, we know that many, many societies in many different parts of the world have used like every single possible part of a bison, you know, for different things, right? For artwork, right? For, you know, use the teeth, right? Used various bones, use the skull. I mean, there's all kinds of things that have been used and preserved and even preserved uh, in the sense of like as a trophy. Like these are really cool items, right? These are really special things. T-Rex skull, that would be a really special thing. Maybe a little hard to lug around, um, but something very unique to have. So it, what, this, what this all boils down to is this. Right? You're saying that 85 different kinds of dinosaurs got off the ark, and then they were hunted to extinction. But for some reason, not a single part of any of those dinosaurs have been preserved for us. We haven't found them in any, any uh, hunting communities, all right? in any hunting sites. And, and if you maybe don't know the literature, but there is a huge amount of literature of different hunting sites and, you know, um, archaeological sites where we can see that uh, mammoths have been killed. Lots of different other kinds of elephants, uh, other species of elephants that are extinct today. Right. So these remember, these are elephants that got off the ark. Those elephants just if there's just two elephants became all the different elephants and then in just a space of a few hundred years, they don't replicate very fast, right? They don't reproduce at high rates. 
So it's going to take a while to make a herd of 100 elephants. And, even, and then they have to diverge into different species. And then they, after they've diverged into different species, they've been hunted and killed. And we have remains of those elephants preserved with butchery marks on them and so forth from people using stone tools to cut them. Right, And so we have all that stuff preserved for us, and yet somehow every single evidence of a dinosaur has slipped through? That makes no sense. And then you add to this Dr. Dan Biddle saying like, oh, well, and I, I know he's, you know, he says he thinks they're extinct, likely extinct. I, I think he, he kind of fits in with some people who actually believe the legends uh, that dinosaurs are existing just a few hundred years ago and actually hopes that they still exist or thinks they might exist somewhere. But if they have, that means they've persisted for thousands of years in multiple different locations across the earth, which means they have to be in populations. I mean, even if you argue they're in very small populations now, they had to have persisted in populations that have existed as tens of thousands of individuals, at least per species, you know, over that period of time, and probably many, many more. And yet, Somehow none of them got preserved. I don't mean just hunted. I mean just like they happen to get preserved somehow for because we have billions of fossils from post-flood layers of rocks and sediments. Right? We have massive volcanoes that have killed thousands of like ice age rhinos and horses and tapirs and uh, sheep and goat or or primitive versions of those. Right? You know. So we have abundant evidence of all kinds of organisms that have gone extinct um, and that, that are no longer alive today. They're in the post-flood world and therefore must be descendants of things that got off the ark, and yet not a single dinosaur. Now, if Dan Biddle is right, right, young earth creationists, if they really think that dinosaurs have been around that recently, they should expect to find this evidence. Right? The lack of this evidence should be very curious and concerning to them. Um, but here's what, here's what I'd like creationists to do. I'd like them to say like, they predict that it should be found. And here's the more intriguing thing. If it could be found, I mean, if, if a dinosaur tooth were found like in somebody's collection of bone fragments and other teeth and other things that have been preserved, then you know what that means? It means we're going to be able to sequence a dinosaur. I think creationists should believe that we should be able to sequence the entire genome of a dinosaur someday. That should be a prediction of theirs. But even if they thought all the dinosaurs were extinct in the flood, the flood only being 4,300 years ago, really they should, be able to, they should be predicting that we should be getting intact DNA out of dinosaur bones um, just from the flood. But if you have post-flood organisms, I mean, we have generated genomes of ancient horses and rhinoceroses and all kinds of things now, of things that clearly were a bit, have been dead for more than 4,000 years, right? Even in the young earth time scale, I mean, we think that some of those horses are 700,000 years old, but in the young earth scheme, they're only 4,000 years old, like ice age, right? They're ice age horses, ice age rhinos, ice age cave bears, ice age dire wolves. Um, we have sequences from all those. Those are 4,000 years old. So I think that a prediction of young earth creationism, right, is that we will eventually find remains of dinosaurs and pterosaurs, right? If they believe that those were still around in the Middle Ages, in order for people to see them and come up with those legends that they're based on actual dinosaurs and pterosaurs, then the prediction should be we'll find just a little scrap of one of those at some point, and we will be able to sequence their entire genome. That should be the prediction of young earth creationists. Um, yeah, that's really all I had to say. I, mean, I just, I, you know, I'm just watching this video, and that just that idea kind of hit me again. Um, and I, I think of it every time I hear about this, like when young earth creationists try to answer the question, "What happened to the dinosaurs?" And I've heard. A number of them kind of fumble around with different ideas. Um, most of them kind of just think that they got off the ark and just sort of like died right away, uh, or very very soon after the ark. But there, but it's 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 like this. Um, it's you know to believe that they might still exist today is so tantalizing that many of them can't let go of that idea. 
right? They, they want to believe those, those mythologies of things that sound like they could be dinosaurs uh, and believe that that's true. But if they really do believe that's true, then we should, we should have found a dinosaur by now, right? Either alive or the remains. When some of these dinosaurs are pretty big, should have left should have left remains. I mean, after all, we have millions of remains of mammoths, right, and mastodons on this earth, and they are all the product of reproduction after the flood. Uh, and they're all extinct today, right? And they've been extinct for quite a while, and yet we have lots of their remains. So why not dinosaurs? Why not pterosaurs? And then don't even get us started about the synapsids, right? 70, oh, let's see, I'm trying to remember now. I think 76, maybe, or maybe 67 synapsid kinds. And for those who are wondering, like, what the heck is a synapsid? A synapsid is, a, uh, is, a, a, is an animal type that uh, is a vertebrate um, that is neither classified as a reptile or as a bird uh, or as a mammal. Right, or an amphibian, but is a synapsid. And they're thought to be a, a branch off of reptiles, early, early, early reptiles. Um, actually, maybe a branch off of amphibians, and then you have reptiles, you have synapsids. Eventually, some synapsids become possibly the mammals. But they're not clearly not mammals. They don't have mammal like all the mammal-like characteristics. And so they're a separate type of vertebrate. Well, there's 60, so we'll say 67 different kinds, I think, uh, according to Answers in Genesis. So that's 67 kinds of synapsids, which were very large. Think of them as, uh, I mean, size of bears, um, sometimes much, much larger than that. I guess you could say they have the size ranges that, that, that dinosaurs had, although none of them were quite as large as the largest dinosaurs. So you had all these different synapsids in this pre-flood world. And then you have representatives of 67 different times on the ark. They all get off the ark as well. So you have 85 dinosaur kinds. You have, um, I think I mixed this up earlier. I said, I said 70 some pterosaurs. I think maybe it's only in the 40s uh, in terms of the number of kinds that Answers in Genesis recognizes of pterosaurs. And then you have 67 synapsids. You start adding that up, we're looking at like 200 different kinds of relatively large, distinct um, vertebrate forms, right? All of which are extinct today, but Answers in Genesis is saying existed just 4,350 years ago and suggests that some of them have survived up until very recently. And yet we don't have any evidence of any of them. Right now, I just said no evidence. I think that they would point to those myths and legends. I'm saying any physical evidence. What's the physical evidence? Like, give me a, a piece of one of those organisms. Again, trophy hunters, right? Human beings have always been prone to finding things that are unusual. I mean, a pterosaur head, a pterosaur jaw, the giant, like, you know, keel on top of its head. You're saying that nobody preserved any of those bones? They didn't hang one of those things up on their wall? Because they did for a lot of other animals that we're familiar with today, right? Even thousands of years ago. Somehow, 200 different other types of, of animals have, were just ignored as they were hunted to extinction. I find that rather hard to believe. I think that's a real challenge for, for young earth creationists. They need a better explanation for the, the disappearance uh, of the dinosaurs and all these other critters. All right, that's it for today. That's Critiquing Creationism. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.